My name is Brooke Erickson. About two years ago, I decided that I wanted to start training and uh, knew I needed to make a change. And my trainer encouraged me to sign up for a figure show. And so I did one in April of 2010. And by July of 2011, I won my IFBB Pro Card. We're gonna start basically 10 years ago. So that means I was about two years out from having my first daughter and I suffered from an eating disorder, anorexia. By the time that I got pregnant with Sierra, I knew that I needed to try to overcome that in order for her to be healthy. And I ended up just going completely overboard and gained 85 pounds in my pregnancy. After I had her, I was completely lost on how to lose weight. Because when you have an eating disorder, such as anorexia, you pretty much don't eat. You just starve yourself, and so you don't really need to exercise. I bought an exercise video, put my daughter in the swing, and every night for an hour and a half, I worked out and basically lost the weight within about a year and a half. And then I got pregnant again, and unfortunately we had a stillborn. And I think that that sent me kind of into a little bit of a depression. And I went back to my old way. I got really small again. And then I got pregnant with my second daughter. Again, very fearful of gaining weight. I gained 18 pounds. But she was incredibly healthy. And then kind of went back into my old way again after I had her, I lost the weight within a week. Then I got pregnant with my third child. And after she was born, I only gained probably 19 pounds with her. And after she was born, that's when the economy changed and everything hit and my husband was struggling and we had to sell our home and do a lot of things just to survive basically. And again, that was my way of dealing with problems. I just didn't eat. And I got down to about 89 pounds. I think that was my lowest weight. One day my husband comes home and he brought this magazine home and it ha actually had a figure competitor at the time on the cover. And he suggested that I try to maybe do something like that, like gear my energy into something that is positive. I kinda had an aha moment when I was um, in the living room rocking my very colicky baby and my two daughters were sitting on the couch and they were watching me and I just started crying and uh, and I knew I needed to make a change and um, sorry <laughs> anyway so I hired my trainer in um, December of 2009 and asked him to help me get to that point in my life where I could look in the mirror and be happy with who I am. I went and met with a trainer. I took the magazine, the exact magazine in, and I asked him, I said, can you help me get through this? Can you help me look like this? And he said, the only way I can help you is if you trust me. And I said, okay. And it was actually like December 27th or December 28th. And he made it very clear he didn't want to start until January 1st. And the reason why he did that is he said, I want you to go home. I want you to think about this because if you're going to make this commitment to be a healthier person, I want you to fully make this commitment. And then I get home and I tell my husband that I paid for a trainer and he said okay you know he he wanted me to be healthy that's all he wanted so he didn't care at that point that we didn't really have a whole lot of money it meant everything to him and so January 1st him and I both went to my first appointment and we got our our training program my routine freaked out at first when I saw you know the amount of food that I was supposed to be eating and my goal initially was just to gain five pounds 
just to get on the scale and have it say 105. And I did it. I got to 105 pounds and I did my first show. And I will never forget how nervous I was, but I will never forget walking off stage and feeling like I had found myself. The biggest thing for me is to never feel like I'm stuck in a rut. To never do something so much that it's no longer fun. Training, going to the gym, it shouldn't be something that you dread. It should be something that you enjoy. I do everything in phases. My strength phase, hypertrophy phase, which is the growth phase, and then typically followed with like a power phase and then a deload for two weeks, which is where you just kind of let your body, you know, relax. So rep range is based on what I'm trying to go for. So if I'm trying, if I'm starting like a new 12 week program where I know, okay, I need my legs to grow or I need my shoulders to grow, I will do four weeks of a strength phase where my rep range is four to six reps. Then I will transition into the hypertrophy phase, which is four weeks and my rep range is eight to 12. And then there's the power phase, which is more just, you know, you just do things for power. I call it the having fun stage, where I'm not really as concerned about the reps, I'm just having, you know, just going all out. And then when I do my deload, everything is the 12 to 20 range. Lightweight, I'm just letting my body kind of take a relaxing break for two weeks. I train six days a week two hours a day. And that's strictly just because I'm getting ready for competition. My splits are always lower, upper, lower, upper. And I always work two muscle groups that I feel like need the most focus twice a week. I work my shoulders three times a week. And then the added cardio on top of that, I don't do steady cardio. I do hit. I run as hard as I can for 30 seconds to a minute, whatever I feel like my, my body can handle and I walk, and I run, and I walk, and I run, and I walk, and it makes cardio go by so fast. I always take Sundays off, and even though I'm there six days a week, Wednesday is always a day for me that it's usually abs and biceps and cardio. It's something fairly light. It's still giving me time to recover. So in my off season, which usually lasts for about three or four months, I will train five days a week. I'll take Wednesday and Sundays off. I do cardio twice a week freely. I want to enjoy it. On Sundays, I do nothing. The only thing I do is play with my kids. I devote that to family. That's family time. That's my time to do basically whatever I want. I try to stay active, but it's really important to allow your body to rest. Well, a plateau to me just means your body's adapted. A lot of people see it as a complete obstacle, when really it's not. It's usually very simple to overcome a plateau. Uh, it just takes adjusting something, whether it be your calories or your intensity on the treadmill or your intensity in the gym. Your body typically adapts to training, it typically, typically adapts to the amount of calories you're eating. So if you're patient and you adjust something, typically within two weeks you'll see a difference. Well, I personally believe that nutrition is at least 70 to 80 percent of your results. So I think educating yourself not only about food, what's in food, is important. I think it's important for you to listen to your body and determine what works for you. I think that what's really important with nutrition is people understanding the macronutrients in it, um, understanding what one gram of protein, how many calories does that yield? I am extremely educated on what is in food, like what, how many grams of carbs equals this. And I know at the end of the day, I know what I've eaten. A lot of people are terrified of carbohydrates. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that we actually need carbohydrates. That's our energy source. It's, our, it's the first thing our body will burn. If we don't have carbohydrates, our body is not going to, to fuel itself. I log everything. I know how many grams of carbs I've had, I know how many grams of protein I've had, and I know exactly how many grams of fat I've had. 
I like to take the amount of calories that I have for the day. So let's say I'm on an 1800 calorie diet and I divide that up by seven, sometimes eight. I think nutrient timing is extremely important. I think it's one of the most overlooked things in, in health and fitness is nutrient timing. I can't stress that enough. And I eat frequently every two hours. And I think that my body's trained that way. So when two hours rolls around, I know it's time to eat. My body knows it's time to eat. In the morning, I think that's one of the most important meals of the day. I think that that's when you should probably get at least 30% of your carbohydrates. Your body's ready. You've been fasting for eight hours. And I think that it, it jumpstarts your day. It jumpstarts your metabolism. It fuels you. I try, I'm not perfect, but I do try to time all of my carbs, my nutrient timing around my workout. So I try to have at least 30 grams of a complex carbohydrate about an hour before my workout. And then I try to have at least 40 grams right after my workout. Uh, your body produces uh, your growth hormone for muscle at night and fat helps that. So typically I have like more fat at night and in the morning. Because of the intensity of my training, my diet, my calories are a lot higher than maybe even someone that's just on a normal diet, but I do adjust them. Uh, I typically adjust 100 to 150 calories every three to four weeks based on how much I need to lose. Here's the thing about cheat meals. I understand the concept that people want to have the ice cream and I don't believe in completely depriving yourself. So do I think you should do a cheat meal like every week? No, but do I think you should allow yourself to have something every once in a while if your body wants it? Absolutely. I mean, obviously everything in moderation because you don't want to erase everything you've just worked so hard for. Supplements are not a one size fits all. Not everything works for everybody. For me, I'm very basic. I do branch chain amino acids uh, right after my workout. I do a multivitamin. Sometimes I take a fat burner when I'm trying to lose a little bit of fat and maybe something in my head. But I do introduce creatine when I'm trying to grow or when I'm doing my strength phase because I, I feel that it definitely helps me in that strength phase. I do obviously take protein. Lots and lots of protein, uh, but that's it. I think that the three supplements that I mentioned uh, are crucial. Branch chains amino acids, definitely for muscle recovery. I obviously think that really helped me, especially when I was trying to grow because I was really pushing my body to the max. A multivitamin, especially when you're dieting. I mean, you should take a multivitamin anyway, but when you're dieting, you might be reducing your calories and your body is definitely going to need nutrients to help supplement those nutrients that it's not getting. And protein. My protein does change. When I'm trying to grow, the kind of protein that I use, I always use something that's higher in carbs when I'm trying to grow because it, it helps me get my carbs immediately after my workout. So that is one thing that I do do differently when I'm doing my strength phase or my hypertrophy phase, I try to incorporate a protein that has multiple protein sources in it. And then I do a casing at night. I try to make a little ice cream casing shake out of it. And when I'm dieting, I try to stick strictly with the whey with an ice light. Uh, and I do it right after my workout and at night. It's definitely helped me reach my goals and I definitely would not go without those three. To get my full program, check out the page below. If you have any questions about diet tips or training or nutrition, you can find me on Bodyspace, username SuperB. And for anything else you need, for any other information you'd like to find, check it out at bodybuilding.com.